Hello, and welcome to another Simple Index University video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at what to do when you want to process existing files. So this is a scenario where you don't have paper to scan. Either it's already been scanned and you have bulk PDFs, bulk TIFFs that you need to deal with, or documents are coming into you via email, what have you, that uh, are already in electronic format, and we just need to process those. So how do we deal with those? What's the, what's the process of getting them into Simple Index? That's what we're going to be looking at. In this case, we're going to be using one of the jobs that's included with the samples that install with Simple Index. This is in the healthcare folder. It's the third job called Barcode and Autofill. We can see the name up here at the top. And let's go ahead and take a look at some options that are in this job. So we're going to go to the Job Configuration Wizard. And if we go to our File Input, this is where we're going to be working primarily in this video. So our very first thing there, we have the Input Folder. And you'll notice that we're using a bit of a shorthand here. It says percent, config file folder, percent, and then a couple of subfolders are shown after that. And you'll see that there's some other presets already defined here with that percent a value and then the closing percent. And these are just relative file paths. So there, the, it means whatever machine we put this on is just going to go look in that spot that's already defined there. So if we use, for example, the My Documents folder, um, it would just be no matter how that documents folder is actually the real path of it in the background, we can just use this shorthand and it'll just go to that location. In the case of this config file folder, it's actually saying go to the folder where we have stored this simple index job, this number three barcode and autofill. Go to that folder and within that location you'll find the files you need to work on or you'll find the subfolder that you need to go into and find those files. So if I look at this one right now, I've got, I'm in the healthcare folder and then we have our input folder right here and then it was referring to number three input. So it was saying drill all the way down to here. But I don't have to type out this entire D images, samples, healthcare, et cetera path. I can just say, go to config file folder. That's the location where this job lives. And then you'll find the other folders you need. This allows me to take this job and put it on somebody else's machine. And it'll just use the relative path to their machine. So if, they're, if they've stored it on their C drive somewhere, then it'll still follow that exact path. They don't have to go in and change the input folder for every individual user's machine very handy feature to have, especially if you're doing a, a company-wide distribution of simple index and, and each local folder is going to be a little different. It saves you from having to change that in multiple instances of this job. And of course, if you want to specify a folder, you can hit the set button and browse out to that folder. And we can select it right there. And it's saying, this is, this is telling us if we want to use the relative path, it'll keep that percent config file folder. If I don't want to, I can tell it no, and that goes away. And so now we have just a traditional file path spelled out here, starting with D colon slash images and going on down. I'm going to change it back and let it use the relative path. There we are. So the next option, keep input files. Just as the name says, this is saying, as we process these files, leave them in the input folder. Don't delete them. The normal process of the standard behavior would be to delete them from that folder so that the next time we work on a batch of documents, they're just fresh documents in there and we're not repeating the same ones. However, there are times when you want to keep them. Uh, when you're testing a new job and until you've got the settings just the way you want them, it's much more convenient just to leave them in there and not have to repopulate the input folder every time you test. And also if you're running a job where you want to just work on the files where they are and not save them to a new location. You're just wanting to, for example, uh, OCR a bunch of existing PDFs. They're, they're, they don't have full text, so you want to go through and OCR them, but you want to keep them in the structure that they're in. You can just use the keep input files and do them right there in that location, and they won't be moved out. Next option that we have here, we see split multi-page files. Again, name kind of gives it away. If we have a PDF or a TIFF that has many, many pages in it, and we want to look at every page in there because there's indexes that possibly need to be found on pages within the document, then we'll use our split multi-page files option. However, there are circumstances where any indexing that you need to do might be just on the first page of the document. So we don't need to break it up. And so this saves a lot of time. We don't have to look at every single page and try and find OCR values or barcode values or what have you. Uh, also, if you're just going to be entering the values, if this is a manual job where we're just keying in our various indexes, well, then we don't need to look at all the sub pages. We can just take a look at that first page on the file, assuming it lets us know what file we're looking at, and you can index it that way. So you would then uncheck split multi-page file. So now let's talk about this next option, process subfolders. If we go look at this folder three input, we can see that there's a TIFF file here, and then there's also a subfolder that contains some more documents. Typically, when the process subfolder 
option is unchecked, the only thing it will do is go in and just get that TIFF file. It will ignore anything that's in those subfolders. Let's take a look at that real quick. So if I run this job, it's going to bring in all the documents that are in that folder. And since we have our keep input files checked, it's going to leave them there. And we'll see that it's filled in the index values. We can just save all and release this job. And there we go. After it exports, that's it. We're done. The difference is now, if I go in here and look at those options again, and I check this process subfolder, it'll still treat each folder as its own batch. So we won't get all of the documents in all of the folders at once. We'll just get them one at a time as far as the folders go. So let's try it with that setting. Save out our changes, run the job. So again, we're processing and we can save all those indexes, release it. And as soon as this finishes exporting, the next folder shows up and it's a separate batch. So we can see, and it basically repeats the same kind of process. And so if there were 10 folders in there, we would just have 10 batches come in individually. We would not get all the documents out of those 10 folders simultaneously and be overwhelming to both the, the user and the system. So that's what process subfolders let you do. Let's, let's end this batch. We don't really actually need to release it for this. Go back to our options. So the other option you can see below that, when we, when we check that process subfolders, it activates this next option, remove empty folders. So if we're doing the keep input files, where if we're not checking that, and we do check the remove empty folders, as those files all come out, it'll go ahead and clean up your file system and get rid of those, those folders that are now not containing any files as they've been processed. All right, now let's talk about some advanced options. If we hit the drop down here, we can see quite a few more options come into view. Let's talk about the ones that come after fast import because they actually are affected by the fast import. So let's look at these other functions first and then we'll come back and talk about fast import a little bit. So first off, we have sort files by date. It does exactly what it says. If, if, if normally you're in your Windows system, files are sorted by their file name and if you need to process them in date order, how they've come into the system uh, by time, you can turn on the sort files by date option. Recompress images is used to recompress the files using the, the default compression settings within the software. So if you've gotten files from several different sources, PDFs are coming into you from all sorts of customers or vendors, what have you, um, and you want to get them all to a common compression so that they're not different file sizes, we kind of keep things more consistent, you can recompress the images. If these documents, you know where they've come from, it's not, not always necessary as long as they're not coming from disparate sources and you're happy with the compression that's already present. So that's why it's set as an option and not a default thing to use. We also have resample images over here on the right. Works in a similar way, except we're able to, again, if we're getting disparate files and we're in a situation where we've drawn zones and one file has been sent to us that was scanned at 200 DPI, another file has been sent to us scanned at 300 DPI, well, our zones aren't gonna land in the same spot because those files have different dimensions when we look at them by the pixels. So if you resample the images, we can use a, a standard resolution setting that's the same as, as what we set our job up with, and the files get resampled to that size, so your zones would tend to fall in the same place. That's the idea. And then we can also sort folders by date, just like we did the sorting of the files by date, and you'll see that, that feature only becomes available to us when we turn on our process subfolders. So if you need to, again, treat things as they've come into the system, the time they've come into the system, you can uh, turn on sort the folders by date. And then we also have an option here that is run the job until the input folder is empty. So that actually works in combination with this max files per batch over here. So we can tell it how many files we want to bring at any one time. So if you're working with thousands and thousands of files, it's a good idea to kind of limit the number that you're pulling into the system at one time just to not overwhelm the memory of the computer. And so if we were telling it to only bring in, let's just say, for example, 100 files at a time. <clears throat> well, and there's 300 files in this folder we're working with. It would typically stop after the 100 files that it's run. But if we turn run job until input folder is empty, we're now saying, take care of all the files in this folder, but just give me 100 at a time to work with. So that's how that behaves. Now then, I said we come back to fast import. If we, if we enable the fast import setting, you'll see that three of these get grayed out sort files by date, recompress images, and resample images. And the idea is that we just want to ignore any of that information that's associated with the files and just bring them in as fast as we can. There's extra checks that the system is performing. 
So this just ignores all of those checks and just brings the files in as, as rapidly as it possibly can. One significant thing we don't see an option for here, but it's also happening when you enable fast import, is if you have PDFs that are full text and you're not going to use that full text in your indexing, you're not going to try and find specific words or, or values within that document based on its full text, you can enable fast import and it won't. the system will not read all of that full text into memory. It doesn't need to use it. It'll keep it. It stays with your documents, but it doesn't read it into the system so that we don't have to process it as we're working through those documents. It really increases your, your import time. Below that, we have the backup slash exception folder. And you can see again, we have these relative paths going on. There's, so there's default backup, which is something that was defined when you, the first time you ran Simple Index and went through the, config, the, the global wizard and you told it, where's my backup folder? When you use the backup slash exception folder, and then you can choose what situations do we use it in so we can back up all input files. So if you do need to co keep a copy of the input files, but we're using a common input folder that we want to get emptied out, so we're not using our keep input files as before, we can tell it to back up all the input files and then a copy of them will be stored in the backup location. The other option we have is oftentimes when PDFs have come in from unknown sources, they're not always correctly formatted. They're not always something that can be read by, by every PDF reader out there. So if uh, the system runs into an invalid file, rather than just choking the process, it can actually just take those, move them to the backup folder and continue to read all the other documents that don't have any corruption issues. And then you can deal with those independently after the fact. And then finally, we have the types of files to process. So you can see right now in this site over here, we have those various file extensions that the system will read in right now. So if we didn't want to, if we wanted to ignore JPEGs, for example, I could just highlight that, remove it from the list, and also the JPEG, the other version of JPEG. Similarly, if you have files that you do want to include, if I want to add those JPEGs back, I can put that right there, add it, and they come back to the list. So that's the traditional input from a folder. We do have one other option. If we step back to our very first job in the wizard where we're defining where did all these files come from? And we were saying folder, and we just went through all those options. We can also now bring in things from email. It's a new feature. So if we choose email here and next over to the second step, it now includes this download emails option. So in this one, we can connect to a file server. It's, it's via IMAP. And then, of course, put in your server, user and password. And then we have several options here as to how we're going to work with those files. So if we just want to work with the attachments so and that is a, that's the most common scenario a pdf is attached to an email and then the pdf is the piece of information that we're concerned with and we need to index so we can download those email attachments to the input folder and then all of the rules we saw for input folders still apply on the next step background downloading was so we can also take the body of the message and make it an html file and then that can be run through the system via the input folder and, and if, so if the information is, is in the body of the message rather than in that an attachment, that's how we deal with that situation. We can also, rather than doing the HTML route, we can convert the body of the message to a PDF and process that through the input folder. Same sort of scenario, it's just a matter of whether you want to do HTML because most emails are formatted via HTML these days, so this kind of preserves that, that formatting. However, if it's more of a text-based or if just PDFs are, are the preference, then we can go through and make them into PDFs, put them in the input folder, process them just like any other PDF like we talked about earlier in the video. Save message headers and body to text files gives us some, some extra options. For example, if we're needing to include as part of our index information that we capture with the file, the sender, the recipient, the time it was received, uh, you know, subject, body, that sort of thing, we can actually use some OCR fields and set the template value within those OCR fields to percent to percent, to percent to percent to capture the sender, or rather the recipient, the percent from percent to capture who sent the original message, and so on. Next option here lets us process unread messages, just as it sounds. So when we're looking at that folder that we've selected as our, as our IMAP folder that we want to import emails from, we can just process the unread messages. So anything that's new and we don't have to, so things that we have previously looked at, we don't have to, uh, to worry about those. It's just the new messages that have come in today, for example, and they haven't been read. It'll just bring in either the messages or the attachments or both, depending on how we've configured the settings above. 
And then lastly, we have delete messages after a successful import. So when they've come in, we can just delete them off the email server and then those won't get dealt with again. So that's kind of a look at how to process existing files within Simple Index. Uh, if you have further questions, we're always here to help. Also, there is a wiki available on any page of Simple Index. Just go to the support tab at the top and you'll see the wiki there and it can give you a little more information as far as some of these body template tags that we're talking about and, and other information like that. Hope this has been helpful and we'll see you in the next video.